We began our show on Tuesday with the news that uh, I was kind of surprised to hear that Aaron Rodgers was not at the mandatory minicamp for the New York Jets. He's not hurt. There's no contractual dispute that would cause him to make a stance for not showing up. He's also showed up for everything. He was there at the outset of the um, the offseason workout program. He was there for the volunteer stuff. He was there. He's been there. He's been present. He's been talking. He's been leading. He's been doing all of that stuff. And then um, he also said at the end of last year's season, that was a total loss season because his Achilles gave way, um, saying that, um, that anything that has nothing to do with winning all the BS – needs to get out of the building. And now he's out of the building for mandatory minicamp. And just so anybody hears it, my concern wasn't about week one. My concern is the fact that the Jets called this an unexcused absence, that Robert Sala said this is not an excused absence, now leads to all of us to wonder what's up Why isn't he there? Where is he? Sala would only say it's at a place that he finds very important to go, to do. And and how will Rodgers take in, process, handle, deal with his first full-blown New York City sports talk, 24-7, 365, long-time listener, first-time caller, kerfuffle because that is exactly me listen born in brooklyn raised in staten island listen to mike and the mad dog for years while working for the staten island advance i know exactly how new york fans think i know exactly what the front and or the back pages or if not front pages will handle it and that this would absolutely be something even though i don't believe when aaron Rodgers does return and does show up Week one in the tunnel, Monday night football, Jets at Niners. He is back on a field. His hard work and rehab is paid off to get him on the field. This will not matter at all. Unless he doesn't trust the coaching staff. Unless he doesn't handle this stuff with the media right. But when it doesn't matter at all, when he's in that tunnel, I don't think it's going to matter at all. That's what I thought yesterday that's what i wanted to set up today's conversation with that background information because sure enough you saw the post in the daily news right on cue call him aaron dodgers was the back page of the daily news with an empty face and helmeted aaron Rodgers number eight qb suddenly disappears as gangrene begins mandatory minicamp that's awesome (laughs) <laughs> New York Post, full of hot air. <laughs> and they this? actually used that January 8th quote about the BS uh, that has nothing to do with winning needs to get out of the building. That's January 8th. Tuesday, Rogers AWOL from Jets' first mandatory practice. Last year, it was a love fest. Then he got hurt. Then, he, then, then everything that happened with the Jets had nothing to do with him. He was completely removed from this fray completely and totally removed from this fray. So now then, Robert Sala steps to the podium today. Follow-up question. What's up, man? (laughs) What's up with that? Essentially, hit it. I think you're getting some blowback from media people about the use of the word unexcused and because you were okay with him not being here, but you used the word unexcused. So I'm wondering maybe if you could clarify why you used that word. And also, did you tell Rod, did, did Aaron know he was going to be termed unexcused? And how you reacted to that? No, you're fine. Um, talked about it yesterday, but uh, Aaron, Aaron and I are on the exact same page. Um, there's no issue uh, between Aaron or his teammates for that matter. Um, so, like I said, we addressed it yesterday. It's not. It's it's more of an issue for for everyone outside the building than it is inside, and um, and that's about it. Before that, he said uh, he was asked, "Were you aware that Aaron was not going to be here before yesterday?" Is that correct? Sala said yes. 
follow-up. And Terod, meaning the backup quarterback, Terod Taylor, said he had only found out that morning about being the first team reps quarterback. Is there any reason that that wasn't communicated to him before? Sala said, nope, it's a one-on-one conversation. That's not something the team needed to know about. Another question. There was a lot of craziness that came off of Aaron's absence yesterday. As expected, did you have any contact with him, like talk to him between yesterday and today? Quote, no, I haven't. Okay, so now He's then. Ghosted. No, no, I'm saying it, it, no, 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 no. Because, again, there we, we don't know where he is, and we don't know what the term unexcused means and all of that stuff. So before we, before we start diving into all of this, okay, well, I say what unexcused means is that it's something that the Jets just couldn't countenance calling excused because – they were told by maybe some front office type or legal individual that if you call this excused, now the doors are open to no mandatory minicamp will ever have teeth to it because you said even for this guy, it's excused. Right, if it's just a vacation. So let's just find out what it is. What is it? Yeah, sure. And nature and New York media and Rogers haters – and bored NFL fans waiting for training camp to begin. All of those folks abhor a vacuum. So in comes spilling information. First up, let's put up Connor Hughes, who covers the Jets for SNY. He said that Rodgers planned this trip while he was still rehabbing. The Jets have known about it from the moment there was an overlap with the release of the minicamp schedule. Rodgers is quote-unquote unexcused because you can't excuse a trip. Ah, but not a contract dispute, which is Hassan Reddick, who's not there. Semantics, but there's no unrest inside the building. The Jets don't think it's a big deal. Not sure why the world is reacting differently. Oh, boy. Rodgers missing these two days after being at every voluntary workout the last two years will have zero impact on what the Jets and Rodgers accomplished this coming season. So now, a couple things about that. Is if that that... Let's just take all of that as gospel. Not saying he's making any of this stuff up. I'm just saying, like, if the Jets are... He's getting this from somebody, obviously, within the building, if the Jets don't think this is a big deal. So the issue I have with all of this is the statement of they don't understand why people are viewing it differently. It's just like, do you, do you not live in the New York metropolitan area? I mean... In all honesty, do you, do you not know what it's going to come across as like that all of a sudden, out of the blue, Rogers isn't there, and it's called unexcused? And if it is a trip, let's just say it's something that Rogers planned when he was rehabbing and told the Jets about it. You've had months to set the table. You've also had an ability to potentially move the mandatory minicamp to last week. When Rodgers may not have the trip. And you could avoid all this stuff because you know if you're just going to come out of the blue and have your coach sit up there and say, he's not here and it's not excused, that there is going to be a major, huge-ass back page screaming headline or two or three to deal with. And why would you want to deal with it? Even though, as I've said, by week one of this year, when he's in the tunnel, it's not going to matter. Juices will be flowing, and he's going to want to beat the crap out of the San Francisco 49ers and do what he needs to do. I'll be back. That's number one, though. You had different ways to handle it. Why this way to handle it? Because it's possible Rodgers will be viewing it that he's being made an example of for whatever reason after he's done everything else right. Because it also opens up him to this interpretation. One of his favorites, I I will just come out and sort of place tongue-in-cheek in this because I believe it was this reporter who once upon a time said the Jets had a list hmm. from Rodgers of players that he would like to see on the team and have fulfilled 
for his first year there, and he pushed back considerably against Diana Rossini, then of ESPN, now of The Athletic. She tweeted this out, which is just a fascinating way to look at it. But, oh, pardon me, Diana Rossini tweeted out the following. Let me get this for you here. Sorry, we got a lot of moving parts here. I thought I had provided that. But this is this is exactly the sort of thing that I think is an issue for Rodgers. She reported out, Aaron Rodgers is skipping all of Jets' mandatory minicamp this week because he prefers to be somewhere else away from football. That's his choice. Because that's an interesting way to term it. But Prefer. every word of that is, in fact, describing the situation. If it's not an emergency, if it has been planned, he has decided this is what it is, and he's not there. And part of the reason why maybe he's not talked to Robert Sala about all this is it's possible, as you were talking about last hour, TJ, mm -hmm. he could be on one of his retreats where he's got the offense – he knows the offense. The OC is there in name only, essentially, because he's got full, complete hardware, software wiring into Rodgers' brain about what to set up play calling. He's got this thing down pat. He doesn't need two more days of this stuff. The thing that's most important is for him to be somewhere to get his mind right. And that, that does dovetail into him not being in communication with anybody right now. So if I'm not mistaken, our friend Pat hasn't even said something on his show as to where Rogers is, right? Yeah, no, Pat doesn't okay. know. Okay, so, so that kind of dovetails into all of this, if that's where he is. Right. And I don't know where he is. Nobody knows where he is. And it's all a guessing game. And then you see what Chase Daniel, my colleague at NFL Network, tweeted out. Wait until you hear where Aaron Rodgers is instead of with his teammates. That's an expensive absence. And then he didn't elaborate. I don't know if that means – I don't think he's going to get fined. Although the Jets, there's reports that the Jets will fine him. But it's just weird and awkward and a very long mandatory minicamp – for, for the Jets right now when they're talking to members of the media. They are all working out, I'm sure, to a man they all know where Aaron is. And I'm sure in their minds, it's an excused absence if that's what Aaron wants to do. If I had a guess. But for the Jets to just basically know about it, see that the freight train, media freight train is coming, and then stand on the tracks... And not jump off it and say, here's what we're going to do. We're going to send Robert Sala out there, and he's going to call it an unexcused absence. And then act like, according to Connor Hughes, apparently, like, well, I cannot believe there's gambling going on in Casablanca. Are you serious? <laughs> really? You mean the New York media is going to take our coach calling Aaron Rodgers an unexcused absence, being AWOL, and they're just, they're going to they're gonna make something of it? The national media is going to make something of it? So if Rodgers is somewhere uh, incommunicado right now, whose job is it to get him up to speed? That'll be quite the gig. And then how is he going to process his first full-blown New York sports media kerfuffle? How will he handle the questions from the New York media that I think this time will be a bit more aggressive than they ever have been with with Aaron? And if that is a parry and thrust that he goes through, the only thing that it can affect during the playing season is that's the first ever parry and thrust that he might think was either manufactured by management or the coaching staff, although they say they're all on the same page, or he feels it's unfair because he knows what's best for him, and he's done it, and his teammates didn't have a problem with it. And now he's got to go through all this stuff. And 
this is the first one of those, which might make the one that happens during the playing season if the Jets are one and three a little bit more contentious then, because we're already we're already one of these in. You know, I've been through these things, man. I've seen it. I've grown up there. I've heard it. I've seen it. Because I'm just trying to factor all this in is how will it affect a win or a loss during the fall? And are we just making a big deal of it right now because there's no football? But it is weird, man. Quarterbacks are there for their team. They're there for their guys. They're there because they're the leaders. They're the first one in, last one out. They're not the ones who aren't there because they're as... Connor Hughes even explaining there's not much going on. They're called a trip. Diana Rossini's talking about it is a conscious choice to not be around football when everyone else is there. Chase Daniel is saying you can't but wait till you hear what it is. Distractions should be out of the building. Well, they're in the building. Calls are in the house. How will it affect a win and a loss again? We shall see. I say week one doesn't matter yet. But we'll see what happens during the season when rubber meets road. And that's the latest. Hope the mind is being expanded. Because the back page headlines sure are. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.